two integers a and b such that a square plus b square equal to c and the value of c which we have given in the question is nearly 2 2 into 1 e 9 which means 2 e 9 that is what the value of c is given to us now imagine a simple again these a and b are the simple integers they are also simple integers so i just imagine a simple number line 0 1 2 3 4 up till 1 e 5 by up till 1 e 5 you will get to know but i imagine a simple number line in that simple number line i just have to choose two integers such that their square sum up to my target isn't it same way saying that i have given you an array and i ask you is there are there two integers who sum up to my target value? Is it same, right? Yeah, it is, that's the reason. It is similar to my to some problem. Now, for sure, let's take an example again. Right now, we know that my C is thirty-four, which is only thing which is which is given to you. You just have to tell: Are there any A and B whose square add up to your C? Okay. So very brute force, brute force way you will try for all possible a and b so again as i told you a and b are integers so you will simply go and tell okay bro a i will try as 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 up till so on and so forth and same way i'll try for b 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 up till so on and so forth up till again up till what point we will see that part but let's say we have known these okay i will try for this which means i will have a for loop which will try for a i'll have a for loop which will try for b any point where I have a specific a and b, I will do a okay a square plus b square. If that becomes equal to my c, I can say okay, I have got my answer and I should return a true. If not, if not in worst case, I should return a false. Now, you easily see that you are trying for two for loops. The complexity will depend upon how big this for loop is. Now. I ask you a question, how big this for loop will be? Obviously, that we know that I have to try for all possible values of A, which can give me a value of C. So, my equation was A square plus B square equal to C. Imagining there is B as 0, how I will get my maximum value of A? Because see, I want to get the maximum possible value of A. That I can only get only when my B vanishes, which means my B is 0. So, I got a value of A as under root of C. That is the maximum value of A possible. Thus, I realized the maximum value of A possible is under root of C. Maximum value of B possible is also under root of C. So, my for loop will go, A for loop will go root C times, B for loop will go root C times. Thus, my complexity will be root C into root C. O of n square, right? Where you are trying for all possible AB pairs. O of n square. So it will be root c into root c, which is O of c. And I told you, O of c, okay, if you just go and see, c is roughly in a roughly in an order of 1 e 9. So O of c as a complexity will not work, it, it will give you TLE. That's it, this is brute force approach. So let's see the brute force approach. We try for a to a from 0 to a to root c again. Why is 0? Because I can start from 0 also. So a from 0 to a to root c. And same way b for 0, b to root c and b plus plus. Time for all possible a, b pairs. If any pair matches my equation, I should return a true. Else I should return a false. Okay. Very obviously, we realize in a very beginning itself, it is similar to my two sum problem. In the two sum problem, we have already seen an improvisation in the brute force that we can use a hash map. The essence of using a hash map was that you will try for one value if you remembered i'll re reiterate so if you have forgotten I, i'll reiterate that what you do in a standard standard to some problem you will try only for a and then you know you have the equation a square plus b square is equals to c so you will try only for a only for a which means a is known to you right now because you are trying for a which means b is variable so, b is nothing but under root of c minus a square. So, this thing you could have searched in your hash map. If you would have done that, to, then, then you are up to some problem. But in this case, my b is all the possible integers. So, just a search. Is there any b possible or not? Because I, I just want, is there any b possible or not? So, what I will do, 
I know that I will try for all possible A's now. Only A's. I will try for all possible A's. Okay, as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Up till what point? Under root of C. And we remembered that C was 34. Under root of C will be 5. 5. Again, I have taken 4 values. Why I have not taken C value? Because if I take a C value, it will be higher than my 34. I want to add up two numbers and make it equal to my 34. I cannot add higher number plus even a 0. I cannot make it to 34. That's the reason I have to take a floor value. Okay. Now, if I am on a specific A, I will try to search for a possible B square value. So, I will do and do a 34 minus A square because that is equal to my B square. That will give me a 34. Now, just to make sure that, okay, A is, you know, C is, you know, B square, you received a value. Is it valid or not? That's a question. For sure. Just check. If you do a under root of this, if it's a basically saying B square, if this is a perfect square, it's valid. If not, it's not valid. How to check that? How to check if a number is a perfect square or not? How to check if any number is a perfect square or not? Just simply do a square root of that number. Simply do a square root of that number. What you will get? For sure, you will get some 5 point something. If you get an integer value, you are good. If you get a double value, you are screwed up. Now you will say, Aryan, this square root function returns me always a double value. So are you saying it is always, always I'm screwed up? No. See, you just have to check if this thing is an integer or a double, actual double. So there are two ways to check it. One way is after finding the square root value, which is in this case, it will be 5.8, right? Now, just do again, you, you have received a B, possible candidate of B. Now, if you do a 5.8 into 5.8, you will never, again, I'm, I'm saying if you do a 5.8 into 5.8, you should be receiving this value. But I'm saying that I wanted an integer. So, I will bring it down to an integer value, which means 5. So, one way is either you compare this 5 with 5.8. RN. This is obviously wrong. It would have been correct if the number would have been 36, which is a perfect square. Because it its value could have been 6.0. Integer value could also have been 6. Then in this case, 6 would have been equal to 6. Right? That is the reason. That, that's the reason. One way is to convert it, convert this result to an actual integer and then compare. Are they both same? If they are both same, which means this number was a perfect square. If not, there is one more way. Simply convert this to an integer after doing a square root, convert this to an integer 5 and then multiply it again. 5 into 5 should be equal to 34. Obviously, it is not in this case. In, but if I do 6 into 6 is equal to 36. That's another way. I have taken the num way number 2. Again, I showed you both the ways to do it. So, what you will do? You will simply try to convert it to an integer and then do a square again. If I can come back to its value, Okay, it was a perfect square. If not, it, it's it's not a perfect square. So I will try for all the possible 33, 30, 30 like uh, number 25. I'll try for all the possible values. And whosoever give me, okay, I have received a perfect square of B, as in B is a value which will is a perfect square. So I am good to say that I have got the value. What is the complexity? Before that, let's see the code itself. So code simply says you will try for all possible values of A. That's what you were trying. You will try to find the value of B. Which is simply again, this is simple integer I have casted to. This will return me a double value. I have casted to a long long or you can say integer. Again, why LL taken? Because you know that A square, again, if you go back up, A square, it can turn to be a C. As you can see, C here. This also can turn to be a C. And these both are touching the int max limit. So if int taken, it might overflow. That's the reason I have taken an LL. Or you can take a long also. That will also work. I just need a buffer for a bit more of LL. A bit more of uh, int. Cool. Now, uh, I just converted back to a square and checked. If it is exactly same to the value which I have given, which is C minus A square, then it's a perfect square. I should return a true. Return a true. And thus, ultimately, I can say, okay, if there is no possible perfect square of B, okay. Answer is false. Now, the complexity for this, you can easily see that this portion, this portion is nothing but 
under root of c but this square root function is actually also log c but rn is it, it o of 1 no it is not it's a math function and how internally it finds the square root of any number is also by doing a binary search on the entire array if i ask you you are given a number from 0 to again let's say you are given a number c you have to find the square root of that number how will you find it internally it finds using a binary search how it will go and find the mid mid now you have to find the square root of the number right it will go and find the mid mid is in the between okay then it will just do a multiplication okay mid into that mid if it is actually say okay um i am close to that if not it can go right or left just so as to be close to your root c mid needs to be close to your root c that is how it will keep on going around for example in the case when i had the number let's say as 9 so if i have the number let's say as 0 to 9 if i take the mid it will be 4 but you know the square root is actually 3 thus mid okay i land on to mid then i will see how okay i should go left or right and dependingly i can go left or right if i want to go close to my number cool that's the reason uh same way it works that's the reason its complexity is log c so i can also say that instead of taking the square root by myself i can apply binary search also to get the square root of the number so in this we saw two ways one way is to use the square root other way could have been using a binary search itself ultimately both will have under root of c for the above for loop and log c again log c in the worst case because what if a is zero that's the worst case log c so log c for the square root function time is under root of c log c space over fun because no extra space used now can we improvise it we can think of only when we had seen the two sum problem the two sum problem says that you could have also used a two pointer approach considered you have sorted the array in your two sum approach there's a modification that if you had sorted the array then you can use your two pointer approach but we already know that this is an imaginary array which we have built and is already sorted so obviously i can apply my two pointer approach how i know that my a again for two pointers i need two pointers itself starting and ending for starting pointer i can take the initial value which is zero ending pointer what is the maximum value for sure under root of c so when i have these two pointers again try to get to a value which is equal to your target and your target was c i'll do exact same stuff that i'll do okay a square plus b square right now it is equal to 25 equal to 25 which is obviously less than my 34 which is my target where i should move if i would have moved left i would have reduced the value which means i would have reduced the value reduce the value which means reduce the value which means i am reducing and i'm going away from my target but i wanted to go close to my target i wanted to go close to my target so i should increase the value of a or a pointer i should move so i will move my a pointer itself okay my a pointer now came here again the result is 25 plus 1 which is 26 again it is less than 34 i should again increase my target a it is 2 square plus 5 square 29 which is again less than 34 again move my a again move my a 3 square plus 5 square your value is 34 again it is equal if it would have been high then you would have tried moving your b point right simple as we saw earlier also in two sum and thus if it is equal anyhow we have got the answer and that is voila great and that is your answer itself so what happened with this how you improvised it it was already sorted so you did not need to sort anything that's the best part in the very beginning to figure out b you use your square function but you might say it's the same right no it is not because this is a pre-computation so log c is in the very beginning this is log c in the very beginning this is o of 1 but then your while loop starts this while loop again a is 0 b is root c so at max it's o of n o of n n length is root c length so this will be o of root c and thus simply comparing you up, you obtain the result if the result is equal true if it is less move a pointer if it is more move b pointer 
Thus, O of log C plus O of root C will be the complexity if you use a two-pointer approach. Ultimately, if not, answer is false. So that is the most optimal approach, which is O of root C plus log C, and again space O of one, and that is your answer. Nobody has told this approach. I don't know why, because it is exactly same as two-pointer. Still, uh, Lee could have not told it. But yeah, you know now that this is the most optimal approach. Cool. Now you saw all the approaches. Brute force. Brute force can be optimized a little bit by using the same root C log C approaches. Then we saw our hash map approach, or you can say looking for B value. We saw root, square root approach, or we can also use a binary search approach. Then we will ultimately saw for two pointer approach. Cool. Bye bye. Take care. I hope you enjoyed it. Yes. Hashtag baby. And goodbye. Take care. Bye bye.